So right now I am at a hotel up in San Francisco on a really fun shoot. This is day one technically, but day one of shooting actually starts tomorrow. And it's a three day shoot. We're up here for five days and I am super excited for this shoot. I can't really give too many details about the shoot, but I'm up here with Samuel Elkins. He brought me on for the shoot and it's gonna be the biggest shoot that I've had in my entire career. So I'm really excited about it. I'm the DP for it. We have a good crew. The client side is amazing. They all seem super fun. But today I wanna show you guys exactly how I set up my camera from start to finish for production. So right now I have my camera inside this Nanook 935. All my stuff's in here, so let's get into it. So starting off, we have the Canon C70, which is a camera that I own. We're using it for the shoot. Originally, we wanted to use the Canon C500 because of the in and out ports, the full frame sensor, and just the design. But we ended up deciding on the Canon C70 primarily for the battery life, file sizes, and the small compact kit. For video, I am gonna be pretty much solo. I don't have a first AC, I don't have any assistance. We will have assistance pretty much in general for photo video, but for the most part, I think running a smaller camera like this for this shoot is gonna be a proper move. So I have my Canon C70 here, and kind of a disclaimer, I'm gonna go into a full kit review about this Canon C70 rig, so I'm not really gonna go into too much detail with all of this. But uh, the bright tangerine cage on here, I absolutely love it. And then first things first, I always throw on this bright tangerine NATO handle. It's just super easy to put on and it is probably the most versatile and comfortable handle I've ever used. These accessories are super expensive, but when you're working on sets like these, they're invaluable. So it makes it pretty easy to latch on. I have a bunch of mounting holes and then I can move it back and forth if need be, uh, depending on the balance of the kit. So I usually keep it kind of around there because I don't really run too heavy of lenses. And speaking of lenses, we are actually shooting on the Canon RF lenses. So same shooting on the Canon R5 with RF lenses. So to match our stuff together, I have the 24 to 70, we have 1535, we have 100 macro, and then the 70 to 200 2.8. So I'll primarily be rocking the 24 to 70, maybe about 80, 90% of the time. Sometimes probably the 70 200 and then a few shots, the 100 macro, but the 24 to 70 is an absolute workhorse. I still kind of want to buy one, but yeah, absolutely love this lens right here. Yeah, I have the Canon C70 here. Got the RF 24 to 70, which is an absolute workhorse. And before, just hit it with that. Tomorrow I'm gonna auto black balance it, but I always like putting the lens on as I build the rig just to make sure that the balance is all set up. Tomorrow when we get on set, I'll turn on the camera and then auto black balance it as need be. But man, this 2470 is sleek on here. I just love this thing. I do wanna buy one. We'll see. Next up, I have the Bright Tangerine base plate. I'm gonna mount my rails on. I need to use this to attach it to my tripod as well as getting a V mount on here. No follow focus this time because we're using photo glass, even though I will be pulling manual focus with it. There's really no need for a follow focus. Let's we'll attach this on here. I have the DJI riser on my Bright Tangerine cage, so it allows me just to slide this base plate on instead of having to screw it all in, which does take time. And it kind of commits me to having the base plate on 100% of the time. So I don't want that. So this riser was a little bit extra, but I think it's worth it because it just makes everything a lot easier. Okay, so we got this on there. It's all set. Starting to get heavy. It's one thing I'm noticing. So, okay. Next up, I have my IDX V-mount plate to attach my V-mount batteries. This thing is actually new. I just picked it up and it's great because I've never had a V-mount plate that has extra in and out ports. So this actually gives me two D-taps and then a USB-C port, which allows me to hardwire all of my accessories in to this plate. And then I can put my battery on the back, which then means every time I swap batteries, I don't need to pull out all the cables and then re-put them in when I swap batteries. So yeah, I think it's gonna be a great addition to this kit. I haven't actually used this on set yet, so this is the first time, and it's pretty small and should be pretty nice. And on the back here, I have a wooden camera D-tap to barrel connector, which will then plug in to the barrel port on the C70 here, but I do have a Canon BPA30 in here in case a V-mount battery does run out. I don't want my camera to all of a sudden be flatlined and cut because I ran out of battery, so I always keep a battery in there, and I think it's always good to have a battery in when you're running 
uh, D-tap to barrel in case something does go wrong, but I'm powering everything off of V-mount on this kit, which will be nice. One thing you'll notice is that my LCD screen is actually blocked by the V-mount plate. So tomorrow when we get to set, I'll take the V-mount plate off, flip the screen around and then put the V-mount plate back on. It's not a big deal because I really won't be referencing this LCD screen. The only bummer about the C70 is that the screen is a bit flimsy and on sets like these, I really, really don't want to bump it. So I do end up relying on my small HD 702 touch, which I guess we might as well set up right now. So to attach my 702 touch, I do have this monitor mount with a locating pin on top as well as two on the bottom with a 3 8 which allows me to attach it to the front handle here, which kind of gives it like a low profile look. There are certain times where I do want to have the monitor kind of upright facing me as I'm shooting, which I do have a normal small rig monitor mount with a cold shoe, which can go on the top here. But for this, I'm going to bring both. I'm going to start off with this RE locating pin one because I think it's going to be just a lot nicer to shoot with. So it's got this monitor mount attached here. It's always kind of weird getting the locating pins in. I don't, I don't think it really matches up perfectly but I guess the only issue I've had is that this little screw on the monitor mount does get stripped. So I just gotta lightly turn it here. You'll probably hear it strip. Okay, I think we're good there. Next up, small HD 702 touch. You've heard me talk a lot about this. I do need to give a full review on it at some point, but this monitor is great. I really want a Cine 5. The seven inch is amazing, but it's often a little too big for shoots like these, but I don't have a five inch monitor, so I'm rocking this. 702 touch. So to mount this monitor on the front, we'll just screw it in. And then once it's screwed in, I do like giving it, whoa, bounces off. So I need to adjust that. That's why we put the lens and stuff on. I guess I do need to put a V-mount on the back. But once it's screwed in, I like to give it just a little twist and hold it just to make sure it's kind of squared up to the monitor mount. Just because I really don't want that falling off. Okay, so I guess the natural uh, form of things is to put a V-mount battery on. And I have these V-mount batteries. I actually just picked these up from Core SWX. I have two 98 watt hour uh, Core SWX micro nanos. And then I have one FX line 98 watt hour. And I love these because it actually did come with a travel kit. So I have two of these batteries and then a dual charger from Core SWX. These batteries are super small. They're 98 watt hour, so they'll give me plenty of time I am powering three things with this battery, so it'll be interesting to see how much battery I actually get. But now that I have a dual charger, I shouldn't be too worried about battery life. I think still I should probably have at least one or two more V-mounts, but for the most part, we'll be close to power so I can recharge all my stuff if needed. And one thing you'll notice with these batteries is that I have tape all over them. I have red tape here, green tape here, and then I think on, I put them on opposite sides. And then I have these little stickers. So essentially green tape means that these are fully charged up, ready to go. Red tape means that these are empty, needing to be charged. And then these little stickers on the side, they're just my information. I think I have my phone number and then website and then my name. So essentially when I'm having my kit set up, I can put these batteries in green side up if they're charged, red side up if they're not charged and that they need to be uh, recharged. So just these little visual cues really help out with the organization on set, especially in these scenarios where time isn't that plentiful. So granted, I only have a couple of batteries. So once I swap them, when I have a chance, I'll run over and throw them on the V-mount charger and then get them going. So then by the time the next one's empty, I have a fresh one ready to go. So V-mount on the back, which should help balance it. Let's see how we're doing here. Oh, that is heavy. Uh oh. Next up, we're actually running wireless video for this setup. And usually I like to rent the small HD Cine 7 with the TX and then a Indy 7 with RX from my buddy Kevin Reyes. But for this shoot, we're going to be using the Hollyland setup, which I am really excited to try out because I actually haven't used them before. But our Digitech has this Hollyland Mars 4K transmitter and pretty stoked to use it. I don't really know exactly where I want to set it up. I mean, there's plenty of mounting holes, but the setup is really small and I really don't want anything just like too far in the way. So I need to get creative with this. My first instinct is to put it kind of like on this top plate here, kind of out of the way. My other instinct is to throw it back here, just kind of over the V mount. So let's figure this out and let's get creative. So I guess first things first, I'll just take the cables out because kind of annoying. 
So I will be running HDMI in and HDMI out through this small HD. So that's actually on the camera left side of things. So it would make sense to put this transmitter on the left side here. So then it would allow me to reach this HDMI port pretty easily, but then I don't want it to like stick out like this far. Let's see. This is a little tricky. This is why I like using the built-in uh, transmitter from small HD, just because it allows things to be streamlined and there's no extra cables or setup. So I could go like monitor mount to cold shoe, like right here. Let's see, let me try something. I actually might use that monitor mount. So if I use a monitor mount there, that definitely stays out of the way. What if I go, oh, I could go like right here. I'll, let's see, my handle's here. Yeah, let's give that a shot. I think on top would be more ideal because there's already things going on up there versus out the side. But then I'm gonna be running cables up through there. Let's see. Actually, let's just do it right here. The side might be the best move. So let's get this guy screwed in. This is why we have cages. It's for functionality. It's not only just to make things look cool, though. Camera setups do look pretty cool. Uh, I guess I don't really need this case in here. I could move that. Yeah. All right. That's on there. Get this transmitter screwed in. <laughs> this is so funky. Oh, this kind of stays out of the way. Look at that. It's really hard to tell on the small screen for me, but I hope you guys can see this. I think this looks pretty good. Uh, my HDMI in, bleh, my HDMI in is right in here. So that will give me really easy access to the HDMI out on the 702 touch, which is right here. It's always tricky trying to find the orientation of it. Okay, there we go. That's in. And then into the transmitter. I've been really looking into these Mars 4K transmitters, so hopefully all goes well. Okay, so I'm in a predicament. I have one DTAP in to the camera. I need another DTAP going to my monitor. And I was kind of planning on running the Mars 4K through USB, which I still might be able to, but he gave me a DTAP. So as of right now, I will probably need to run one DTAP into the actual battery, which isn't the end of the world to swap out. These little DTAP ports are really annoying to take off on this core SWX battery. That's like the only beef I have with it. So let me just get my tool and see if I can pinch it up. And if I have to do this tomorrow, it's not gonna be fun. I just don't know why these are like impossible to like lift up. There we go. So D-tap in the back. I'll need to tie this down somehow, but yeah, we're getting power to that. Okay, cool. You can see that there, there's a USB port there. Let's check to see if I have media in here. Okay, I got two cards, we'll have to format those right when we get on set. Next up is the cabling, which definitely takes the most time because it's intricate and sometimes annoying. So Future Thomas here, as I was building this camera inside of my hotel room, I was really trying to make the DTAP kind of workflow work out, but I ran into a handful of issues primarily with different um, DTAP locations on my V-mount batteries. And I kind of ended up giving up on it because it was annoying to take it in and out the entire time because those little flaps covering the DTAP port kept getting stuck and they're just very difficult to open up. So our DIT and Digitech had these NPF 500 series batteries, which are like the really tiny ones. And we ended up running the TX off of this the entire time. And one small battery was more than enough for a full day of shooting. I think we only swapped them out just out of precaution because they were like halfway done by the, the end of the day. So I think if I were to continue this route, I don't know if I would ever power it through DTAP again, just because the tiny little MPF batteries powered it for so long and it never really added that much weight to my kit. Currently in my kit, I have the larger seven or 900 series battery. So those would definitely offset it quite 
quite a bit, so I should pick up a couple 500 series just to have a lightweight powering option, but it is nice that Hollyland gives you multiple options to power these things with DTAP, USB-C, I think USB-C, as well as NPF, so yeah, I learned that on day two, I think, and we ran with that for the rest of the shoot. Inside of my Nanook 935, I keep this little pouch of all my cables. So I have two HDMIs and then a D-tap to the small HD. So let's get these plugged in. Let's see what we can do. I think first things first, I want to run the HDMI. So we got HDMI here. I also have an HDMI lock from Bright Tangerine that I could use. I haven't had any issues with ripping this thing out, so I probably won't use it. Okay, so let's get this thing fed through. Right in there. It's always good getting your camera set up the night before because you really don't want to do this on set. I want to be alert and ready in case something happens. And it's also just nice being prepared, so it's just one less thing to worry about, especially when you have a 12 hour day ahead of you. So I like running this under like the little uh, switch. I don't know what you would call that lever, quick release lock on the handle, just to make sure it's all like tucked in and tidy. And we'll run that in. Okay, HDMI is in. So I think knowing that I wanna cable manage this. Let's pull out my other pouch. So I have this little pouch right here with all my little sprigs. These things are incredible for organizing your cables. I highly recommend them, especially for kits like these. When you have all these cables running around, you really need to make sure these things stay organized. So let's throw out a couple there. Definitely want one right here to make sure the HDMI cable stays very close to the cage. So we'll put one there. And then pushes one like on the inside here. I'm just Velcro this to my HDMI cable. It's riveting stuff. And it's also nice just having a neat and tidy rig. When you show up to set with a rig that looks professionally done and not like a mess, it's pretty good. So under this monitor mount, there is a quarter 20. So I like putting another, uh, sprig organizer just because it allows me to have my power cable uh nice and tight but i'm also seeing that this cable needs somewhere to go so immediate thought is just pairing it up with this little sprig where my power cable goes so this is also causing an issue here so what i might be able to do is just run it yep i'm gonna run it under this little loop which is sick because this top plate isn't like a full cage but this allows me just to tuck it under right in here. And it's pretty much out of the way. So, so far when I'm opping the camera, what was that lock button? When I'm opping the camera, it's not terrible. It actually feels pretty nice. I like it. As long as the cables stay out of the way, I am chilling with however I set this up. So I guess to jumpstart some things, there's some more quarter 20s on the back that I'll throw these on. I usually do two right here on the back to kind of keep things uh, taut. I usually put some on the back in here. Yeah, I have one right here. I don't really need one on this right here because this D-tap is already kind of like, uh, it's pretty tight right there. So I do have one extra, which I usually put, I keep spinning this thing around. I usually put it right in here, which I might. I kind of wish I had some like 3 8 sprigs. That would be pretty clutch, actually. So let's put that in here. It's like playing Operation. It's like so tight in here. I've seen videos of people saying that you just need to like plug them in. But in my experience, I need to like screw these things in, which kind of kind of gets annoying. Yeah, see, it fell out. This gets really annoying, especially when you have cables. I probably should have done this up front, but Oh well, let's feed those cables in. Boom. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Usually it's such a pain. Those cables are fed through. I can probably run this cable through this sprig just to make sure it stays taut. Lastly, I have my DTAP cable to my monitor. So my goal is to run it from here, up through here, bring it around this top handle, and then through this little sprig up to the monitor. So 
I usually throw it on this side, which goes there. And then I can bring it underneath or do I want to go straight through like this? It's kind of a power move. I think maybe if I like bring it through and then just like have it taut kind of around here, it should stay pretty close. And this is really when I see the limitations of the C70, especially with rigging. I think a C500 or equivalent would just be way comfier to rig up, especially with all these cables. But the C500 was also a $15,000 camera when I bought the C70. And the C70 is well within my budget. So I can take those compromises because I very rarely run the kit like this. There are certain jobs where I do. Again, it's definitely a lot nicer when I have the small HD with the built-in Terra deck because I don't have to worry about mounting something and then having an extra HDMI and an extra DTAP. So it definitely simplifies it, but unfortunately, small HD discontinued that kit, so I can't purchase it. But you can like purchase the V-mount Terra deck uh, backings and stuff, which is pretty cool, I guess. It's also very expensive, so I like renting. Okay, let's get this thing in the sprig. I want to get this tied down somewhere because it is a little hefty. So I guess since the sprig's kind of matched out, I'll just bring the top one in, which will compress the rest. I do need to make room for my easy rig top handle. I'll probably put the top handle on the front half of this right here, just because it's pretty heavy on the front. But for the most part, this is a pretty dialed setup. So first things first tomorrow, what I'll have to do is format all my cards, give it new metadata, so like rename the files, auto black balance, and then make sure my codecs and everything are good to go. I think that's pretty much it. I'm really happy with this rig right here. I might just leave the LCD screen closed because I don't want anything to hit it and I can run all the HUD, um, the heads up display all through the monitor here. But yeah, let's see, this thing's probably like 12 pounds. If we were using cine glass, It'd definitely be above my small HD mini max stables uh, load capacity. But yeah, this is a pretty dialed setup right here. I'm really happy with it. There are a lot of cables, but that's just the nature of using um, a wireless transmitter such as this. Thankfully, we're not running any audio because that would be an extra cable and another thing on the rig. And then it would have to somehow squeeze in underneath this monitor. So this is going to be a great camera for tomorrow's shoot. Again, we have the RF 24 to 70, the 15 to 35, which I probably won't use maybe. 7200 and then the Hunter macro. And then for all of those I have inside this little pouch, I have an 82 millimeter Nisi polarizer and I have a bunch of step up rings for all the other lenses that their front filter diameters don't match. Thankfully the 2470 matches, but I don't know if I'll be using this that much. Just really depends, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Everything else in my case is just kind of just like extra support. I have two extra V-mount batteries. I have NPF batteries for my monitor extra BPA batteries for this. I have extra SD cards, polarizer, cables, focus gears. Yeah, a lot of stuff going on. The last thing that I have to do is to label my media. So let me go get my gaff tape. So because we're going through a lot of data, it's very, very important to label your card drops. And I never really understood why people had this piece of red tape on their camera that said A001, 2, 3, et cetera. And after a couple shoots, it really helps out a lot. So in this shoot, we have a Digitech and a DIT. It's the same person doing two jobs. He's Digiteching for Sam for photo, and then he's gonna be my DIT. And he's running two different laptops, which I think is a baller move, but he'll be dropping my footage throughout the day. And because we're gonna be shooting in raw ST most likely, because there's VFX work, we're gonna be burning through a lot of cards. And I only have two pairs of 256 gigabyte SD cards, which essentially means I have four, but I like doing redundancy recording. And granted, I could just single record, but with these jobs, it's super important to have redundancy. In case something happens, I wanna make sure I have all my data and nothing's messed up. So it's super important. And as we're doing drops, I wanna make sure that my cards are being labeled properly. So on this piece of gaff tape here, I'll write A001. And then I'll put this on my camera here. And then when it's time to swap cards, I can give the DIT my two cards with this tape on it, and then he could put that on his computer, and then he knows that this is drop one, 
two, three, and so on. And then once he knows that it's backed up, it'll be ready to format and I'll already have A002 or the next number going in on it. So as long as we know that everything's being backed up and redundant, I'm okay to clear cards. We haven't had any issues with it yet, but it's always good to stay organized because especially when it comes to wrangling a lot of data, you need to make sure that everything's all there and knowing what drop you're on is also super helpful, especially for the editors. They know exactly where to find the footage. And for us, it's just really helpful to know like, okay, we're on the first set of cards. Okay, we're on the second set of cards. If we're on the third, that means we're on the first ones that were formatted and so on. So I'll put that just right there. Yeah, I always keep this on my kit. I have a little bungee cable for it that I'll usually sling around a C stand, but for the most part, I keep this in my easy rig kit because if I'm using my easy rig, I'm most likely needing this because we have a DIT. So yeah, this is my cinema rig for this whole week's production. I'm really excited to use this camera. I absolutely love the C70. And then these RF lenses, them being photo lenses, it's kind of annoying to shoot video with, but these lenses are probably the best modern photo lenses I've ever worked with. They just have a very unique look to them and the way that they render skin tones and bokeh, it's just really clean. And yeah, I'm really excited to use this camera throughout this week. It's gonna be really fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned a lot. If you have any questions about my camera rig or the accessories that I bring, I do plan on filming a how I pack for a travel shoot at some point. I really wanted to do it for this shoot, but just didn't really feel right. So I did this instead. See you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Peace.